Hello, Annie Cod here and today I'm going to show you one of the most underrated electrical components in Rust, a trapper's dream I like to call it. I'm talking about the memory cell. People tend not to use memory cells because they don't fully understand how they work, but I'm going to change that and show you they're really simple and can help you out loads if you know how to use them. So here we go. Because I'm just showing you the operation, all the components are going to be in plain sight. Obviously when you're doing this, make sure they're locked away to avoid people damaging them, preferably in another room. So let's get started then. Now a memory cell is a one bit storage component set input will set the value to one clear or oh, stop what maniac speaks like that i'm going to explain it to you in a simple way the memory cell outputs power from one channel and when something triggers it it'll switch power to the second channel and then it can be reset manually putting power back into the original channel using a switch for example or automatically which we're not really going to look into today first things first you're going to need something to cause the mode switch to trigger or set as it's called on the memory cell for example a pressure pad you can use lasers timers the list is endless but i'm going to keep it simple you'll then need a way to reset the switch after it's been triggered for example a basic switch again there's other things you can use but i'm going to keep it simple you will also need something the memory cell will be powering which when triggered or set doesn't need powering anymore for example a door controller remember you can only pair the door controller when the door is unlocked once paired simply lock the door again jobs are good at. So once you've got those few bits, you need to power everything up. The memory cell needs power, which goes into the bottom. When the lights are red and green, the power will go through the inverted output on the left, which puts permanent power to the door controller in this situation, and that holds the door open. You then need a way to trigger or set the memory cell, for example, the pressure pad on the floor. Remember, this also needs power, and then you need a way to reset the system. I'm using just a normal switch, and this also needs power. Now, I just just want to point out at this moment it's not wired up in the most economical way i'm literally just showing you the operation it's up to you if you want to save power and adopt a polar bear now you can hide the pressure pad with a rug which is common knowledge now and when you step on it it will switch the power from the door controller to the empty output on the memory cell and to reset it simply activate the switch and let's see it one more time and remember all the parts will be out of sight to save them getting damaged and when someone walks into your base the doors close behind them and there's no way they're opening them doors again now we also have a spare output like i've just mentioned the inverted on the left and the normal output to the right and on the circuit we've just wired up we didn't use the output to the right so let's add another element to the mix we're going to add a coil so wire up the same again make sure you got power to the cell the switch and the pressure pad the rest is pretty self-explanatory, but just one warning. Make sure you wire up the coil to the correct connection, otherwise this might happen. Remember, red and green is on the left, and green and green is on the right. Nice and simple. Now, the good thing about the coils is you can hide them, and if you imagine this is a corridor, you can't see any shotgun traps, you can't see any turrets, you can't see anything electrical, or at least you wouldn't be able to in the normal world because it'll all be hidden away. So you take a lovely stroll down and wallop lamb chowder. Remember, all you have to do is just use the switch to reset it it's that simple now i know this video is a little fast paced so if you still haven't got it i'll show you one more time before we finish on a finale if you prefer a much slower tutorial let me know in the comments down below now wire everything up how we usually do make sure you've got a reset make sure you've got something to trigger or set the switch and make sure you've got both connections in the top of the memory cell connected and remember red and green is on the left green and green is on the right Again, in the real world, make sure all the wires and that are hidden. So you're walking up the corridor, you can see an open door, but no traps or anything that could cause an issue. They don't know there's a coil hid behind the door. When the trap's triggered, the door closes, exposing the coil, which activates and puts 2000 volts up your pinky. Another little tip is, if you leave the switch on green, the memory cell will automatically reset itself when the pressure pad is released or the laser is stepped out of, etc. Now on every tutorial video, I like to finish with something a little bit different, go out with a little bit of a bang. And this is a cool way of knowing if someone is trapped inside your base, you can be literally anywhere on the map. So the memory cell is set up as normal. The inverted on the left goes to the door controller and the normal output on the right, which is the double green output, goes into a broadcaster. And you've guessed it. Make sure the pager and the broadcaster are on the same frequency. I'm just gonna put 5555. And when someone 
someone walks into your trap base and gets trapped, the memory cell switches power and activates the broadcaster, sending a signal to you anywhere on the map. Pretty cool, eh? Again, remember in your base, all of the electronics will be in another room and well out of the way to avoid them getting damaged. Now again, I know it's been a fast paced video. This is probably the best way I can explain the memory cell. I know you've learned at least something new to take away. It's been really short because I don't like to waste anyone's time. And if you have watched this far, let me know down below that you're a legend and you'll earn a little heart from me as well. For the next tutorial, I'm gonna be doing a plumbing video. So if you want to see that, make sure you stick around. Hit the subscribe button. And if you hit the bell notifications, you'll be notified as soon as it gets released as well. Again, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see the next video's thumbnail before the video's even released. And if you just want to see what I'm working on in general, then follow my Twitter and I post regular updates on there. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.